بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كما رحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله في رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن ولا إلا يوم الدين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد I have a very short amount of time because somebody is also supposed to lecture at 7 and I don't cut into anyone's time as I would not like them to cut into my time. So I'm going to be very short, which my intention was to be very short and sweet inshaAllah ta'ala. As a continuation of what I said today at uh, Jum'ah, inshaAllah, I hope you got the message of what I was trying to get across about the fact that we need to do some action. And inshaAllah ta'ala, we will be finishing up with that tomorrow as well. But now I want to give you a little bit of a a backup of the mind frame that we need to have when we begin to do this action. Because if you agree with me that we need to do something, which if you don't agree with me with those ayats of Surah Tusaf, then I suggest, inshallah, you go back and read them over and over again. Because it's overwhelmingly clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to make effort for Him. But in order to do that, we also have to have to understand, we have to have the right thought process when we're going forward to begin to work for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I also want to answer the second half of the dua that I was speaking to you about. Because today I answered, Allahumma ansur, Islam wa Muslimin, but I did not answer, wa Oh Allah, give dignity. Allahumma ansur wa izza. Islam wa Muslimin. Give dignity to Islam and the Muslims. So I'm going to answer all of that inshallah ta'ala in the next few moments. And I begin by asking us, all of us, myself included, to ask ourselves a question. We need to ask ourselves, who are we trying to please with our life? The way you live right now, the things that you do, the habits that you have, the tendencies that you have, the way you think, the way you act, the way you live your life, who are you trying to please in your life? Because easily we can say, oh, I'm trying to please Allah, but I want us to really think about that. Who are we trying to please in our life? Whose approval are we trying to get by the things that we do in our life? Who it is that we look up to, who it is that we're trying to impress. A lot of these things fit into the answer of how we get Izza. And this is something I want to tell you very clearly. That Izza for the Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given it to you. He's already given it to you. And only you, and me, and us, can decide to let it go away. That's it. Because the izza of the human being, and the definitely the izza of a Muslim, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Islam. This is the dignity of the Muslim is Islam. This is your dignity and your only dignity before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you're trying to gain dignity from anyone else, this is the problem. And this is a majority of the problem of why we face the condition that Islam and Muslims are in today. Because of whom it is we're trying to please. Whom it is we're trying to impress. And I'm going to tell you why. Because our Rasul Sallallahu said it clearly that this is our problem. 1400 years ago, he told us that this was the problem that we are facing right now and 2010 throughout the world. And we don't have Izza right now. You're right. Because we have given it up. The Izza of a Muslim is his Islam, like I told you. This is our dignity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives it to us and He's the only one who can give you izza. You can't get dignity from anywhere else. When we try to get our dignity from any other source than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we go astray. Because Allah 
Azwajal says in his Quran that he gives dignity to whomever he wishes. And he gives humiliation to whomsoever he wishes. So dignity, izza, and humiliation is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says this in his book. But the criteria for that is your thought process. How you think, whom you're trying to impress, who it is that you're trying to look up to, and who it is you're trying to dignify in your actions. And let me tell you, this is our problem. Our Rasul Sallallahu gave us the problem with the solution back to back. And this is my problem, and your problem, and all of our problem. And if we can fix this one thing, we begin to make a major step in the direction of we make a major step in this direction. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa I'm going to go a lot of Arabic for time's sake. He said what is to means in English. That whosoever seeks to be pleasing to people, while it is at the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah will be displeased with them. Again, let me repeat, whosoever seeks to be pleasing to human beings at the displeasure of Allah, that means that he or she does things in their life in order for people to like them, in order for people to accept them, in order for people to respect them. They'll do things that they know Allah does not like. And we're all guilty of this, including me. We're guilty of playing the puppeteer in front of the people. Or they won't do things that they know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them to do in front of the people so that the people will like them. This is what we do. This is our, one of our biggest guilts. Is that we do things in front of people so they like us. We shave off pieces of our deen in order for people to accept us, we don't want to look too extreme. We don't want to look too backwards. We don't want to look too crazy. You don't want to stick out. I don't want to stick out, man. This is what, you, the, what, what I've heard. I don't want to be sticking out so that I can become a target and people can look at me and say I'm crazy. This is not, they'll say this is not the way to do dawa, brother. To look crazy, you're extreme, man. Running around with that big beard and a dress on all day long and I see you praying all in the, in the airport and in the malls and doing all this crazy stuff, man. This is extreme. This is an extreme understanding. This is 2010, man. That'll get you locked up. You might. But the point is, the point is who am I trying to please? The people? What can the people give me? What can they give me? What can you do for me? Nothing, except maybe make dua for me. Because what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to happen to me is going to happen to me without you or with you. On the day of judgment, I can't come running to you and be like, yeah, you remember when I did all those things for you? Why don't you go tell Allah that I did them for you? That person is going to be like, man, you are out of your mind. Even shaitan on that day, even as shaitan on that day, when people will start blaming him, and saying, Shaitan made me do it, man. The devil made me do it. Shaitan will say, ah, oh, buddy. No, sir. All I did was call you. All I did was in your ear. You did it on your own. Therefore, today, I'm free of everything that you do. So, our Rasul Sallallahu said that whomsoever seeks to be pleasing to men and mankind, at the displeasure of Allah, not only will Allah become displeased with you, He will make the people become displeased with you.